live call with uh, uh, David Belfer and myself, Robert Lawrence Friedman. Uh, we are, we have a, an experiment of our sharing and uh, we're calling this Explorations. We have a topic this week, which we are exploring. Uh, last week we did this, we were kind of amorphous. We were just letting it go, flowing and finding out where our, our energies went. Uh, we got some feedback to try a topic. So this topic for this week is going to be on finding your joy. So for me, and I believe for David as well, but I want to talk for him, uh, much, of the, much of my life has been about helping people find their joy and finding their truth, finding their essence, finding their truest self. And so I think that I thought that this would be a really, actually we thought that this would be a really nice topic to explore and to have you explore. Uh, this is a very, very challenging time. And uh, the thought of joy amidst where we are now for many people uh, would uh, seem, would I imagine would seem really, really hard, particularly if you've had loss. And so uh, certainly wanna offer my uh, condolences and sympathy for those of you that had loss during this time. And so we, uh, we wanna um, welcome those of you who've had loss uh, and those of you who have not, to uh, open to the possibility of creating some space for it. Uh, what would that mean for you? And uh, so, David, what uh, what are your thoughts about finding finding joy? Thank you, Robert. I uh, want to say hi to everyone as well. I haven't had a chance to speak yet, which is a first for me. So I love your cup, by the way. That's a joyous thing. Look at this cup, everybody. He's holding a cow in his hands. It is true. Now See, that is a joyous is, thing. Um, this is <laughs> that's a <laughs> that's a very joyous thing. I hold things like <laughs> candles to bring joy, smudge sticks to bring joy, water, coffee, my books, my journals, all those sorts of things bring me joy. But it, this has started off on a very serious note, and I don't want to take away from that. Um, Welcome everybody, as I was just saying. This is our second call and this brings me joy as well. Looking at the concept of loss and those that have lost throughout this past time period. You know, Robert, you live in New York where the loss has been so immense, so immense. I live in Melbourne where in Australia, the loss in Melbourne, in Victoria, in my state where I live has been the most immense. We've had over 700 deaths in Australia. But when I say 700 deaths, according to what's gone on in America, that's not even, that's not what happened. That happens in a day over there. You know, they've lost 300,000 people or something like that throughout the entire pandemic. So for us to be able to have a direct comparison is it's just mind-boggling you know the way the people are in new york the way the, the resilience has come through or hasn't come through i don't know i'd really love to know a bit more about your frontline experience because you're dealing with doctors and nursing staff and hospital staff every day right so you know we speak in terms of 700 deaths or 30,000 deaths or 20,000 deaths and the reality is that even one death, even one death, uh, is extraordinary and immense and painful and horrible. I mean, I mean, my mom passed away last year. She was 19. I'm, I'm actually hearing, uh, David. I'm hearing a uh, um, feed, some kind of feedback. Uh, I'm sorry, I just so, turned on my speaker because I couldn't hear you. Is that better? Uh, no, actually not. Mm -mm. I'm hearing some feedback. Uh, I'll, I'll keep talking if I tell you, but maybe you can lower whatever you're doing. Uh, Let's try again, keep going, keep talking. Yeah. I have to find some sound. Uh, so even, as I mentioned, my mom passed away last year. It wasn't of COVID. 
she was 99 years old. But even then, you know, people say, well, you've had 99 years with her, but it was the most painful experience of my life, one of them. And so, you know, when we talk about death and we talk about losing someone, um, you know, we're talking about all the years and all the history and all the love and all the experiences and all the connections. And, and so it's really important now at this time, very, very important to not become desensitized to mm. death, to someone saying, oh, we had 30,000. I mean, it's each person had a mom and it had, a, had brothers or sisters or children. And I realized that <laughs> we're gonna talk about joy, but, but maybe before we can talk about joy, we have to talk about uh, the authenticity, the reality of, of the situation and, and uh, you know, there is a concept called fake it till you make it, but I don't know if that really applies here. I don't, I don't, because I think that it's really important to acknowledge your emotions. I know many people who don't acknowledge their emotions, who stay busy because they don't want to feel their emotions and who choose to stay busy because they know if they stop, they will feel overwhelmed and they don't want to feel overwhelmed. Uh, I remember you know, I took a, a, a the, the day after my mom died, I took a trip to the Philippines with me and my wife. And that was probably not the greatest thing to do, but I already had it planned. And I remember sitting in the car and just feeling this enormous wave of sadness of the loss of my mother. And I allowed it. And the pain was so deep and the crying was so deep. And yet, and yet it was painful, but it was also cleansing. And, and I just think it's really, really important to allow yourself to go through the grief, to feel it rather than push it away. Cause it doesn't go away. If you, if you, if you just sit on it, you think it's going to go away. It's just going to, you can't run from yourself. It's always going to be there. So you won't have to find a way to release it. Um, David. I, 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 I hear your concept. So this is where yours and my experiences are so different we've never discussed death or life and death as 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 a concept between us in our years of, of friendship for me passing away or, or 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 those times of our life where our loved ones have passed away has always been a celebration time even though they may have passed away from illness or from you know i lost when i was 12 years old i lost two cousins in horrific accident which which changed the trajectory of my life in an instant mm. i lost faith in god on that day i lost mm. faith in a lot of different things on that day and started questioning everything so the trajectory literally was the beginning of my it was the second day of Pes of um sukkot pesach it was pesach so it was in passover the festival of passover the second day and you know they were the same age as me my age by three months older and two years younger. And that day literally made me start to question what there is about life and, and to start to see the immense joy and the immense pain, the hurt and all that sort of stuff that occurred. But I also brought out my child at that time. Something happened that day and I only found this out about six years ago in a, an experience during a program where I've always known I've got multiple personalities. I've got that, and that's just part of who I am. But one of them was my cousin, Stephen. And we play, and we played. And I it was a, a really wonderful day when I realised that was what one of my major things was, which always kept me very playful, wanting to continue that young child that was taken away. And I took that as an honor on that day, which was bizarre because it took me out. I don't know if you've ever done any rebirthing or anything like that in your, in your life of doing personal development and things like that. But that was a day I was in Phoenix. I'll, I'll never forget it because it literally was, there was an explosion in my head of a person that actually gave me permission to actually start living my life again. Because so how did what, what, 
What was the mechanism for you of him dying and then you feeling joy, do you think? Um, it wasn't joy that came straight away. You know, there was a lot of pain. There was anger. That was the beginning of, of in my life, of, of one of the triggers of my rebellion. Mm. And to have gone through much rebellion as, as a young lad, you know, to be kicked out of more classes and then... And as an A-grade student, it was so frustrating for my teachers. You know, why is he playing up? And I was still doing the work. So <laughs> it, could, it was like confusion around. And, um, and it was just searching, looking mm. for reasons. And so I was in a religious day school. And I used to question my rabbis, question mm. my teachers all the time on very, very, uh, you know, they'd say, you must do this. And I'd say, why? And I said, just give me a bit, of, give me a reason, give me an understanding, explain it to me. But they, they in those days, they weren't around to do that. It was more like, well, it says that's what you do. That's what you do. No, <laughs> so it's like, don't tell me what to do. I don't know if you've ever said that. I'll just yeah. I mean, I mean, I I, I agree with the with the concept of um, of uh, being a, re a rebel rebellion, being a rebel. Mm. Um, I've always followed the tenet of Ralph Waldo Emerson, do not, do not follow where the path may lead, go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Mm. That's always been my life principle. And for me, I mean, even in terms of death, I mean, I believe in life after death. Yes. Uh, in fact, I believe in multidimensionality. I believe in our ability to experience gateways into alternate realities using the dream state, for example, which I've done a lot of study on personally. Um, and uh, so it's not necessarily in terms of death, the, the belief that that's the end. Although I will tell you that uh, I did take a course called the psychology of death and dying. And the professor did tell us in the beginning of his class that he believed that life ended um, when we died. And I disagreed with him. And I asked him if I could do a final project on teaching the class, my belief that there's life after death. And that was probably one of the most joyful experiences I ever had because uh, I went to the library and I discovered all these incredible, amazing stories of children who had, uh, who actually remembered their past life. Uh, there's one story of, a, of an Indian child who was five years old, who, uh, told, who uh, said he remembered his past life. He, they got a lawyer and a doctor and uh, two other uh, businessmen to drive 600 miles with him to this small town and he was able to name who lived in each of the houses in this small town and then they uh he he said he wanted to drive to this one house and they they knocked on the door and he actually ran into the house and he asked for a shovel and uh, he started digging and he kept digging and digging and digging. And finally, he said to the woman in the house, where's the money I buried here? And the woman burst out in tears. It was apparently his wife. And she said, after you died, I spent it. Um, so it's, it's, it's really extraordinary stories like that, which I shared in this, in this uh, pres my first presentation, um, that really uh, excite excited me. To, to be able to help support individuals to um, break through their boundaries, to break through their belief systems using, you know, experiential uh, or stories like that. So, I am a believer in in uh, in life after death. So, so the sadness for my mom was not about the fact that she that I that she died and she's you know that's it. It was more just about the missing of her. And, you know, after I went through that, I then, you know, and, you know, it's, when you experience it, it's not like it's, it's one solid block and it's going to last forever. It's just, there was one solid moment where I was like, for an hour, I was crying about her because I missed her. Um, and then it was just thinking about the joy I mean, of, of my mom. Well, I mean, whatever it is. I, I mean, I didn't time it. I, I can't give you like 63 minutes, 42 <laughs> seconds and five, you know, but it was, it was, a, it was a set period of time. And, um, Anyway, so yeah, um, so joy, Let's joy. Back to joy, finding joy amongst all this chaos. Yeah. So what, are the what I'm that you're sharing with your, you know, you've been doing. We spoke about it 
briefly last week how you're going into all the hospitals and you're working with the different staff there. It's true. How, I'm how sure. do you approach that with them? Because they're in the absolute forefront. They're the ones that are really getting smashed with it every day. Now, how do they go home and cope? What do they do for that? I mean, I mean it, it's interesting. Um, you know, most of us are uh, are at a, uh, most of us are at arm's length in terms of COVID. Um, in fact, that's what we're instructed to do, be at an arm's, well, six feet away from someone or wearing a mask. Uh, and these guys obviously wear masks, but they are going into the trenches. Mm. They are, you know, I worked with a, a group of folks at an ICU last week. And, you know, if you could just imagine, you know, where everyone, for the most part, goes away from this, they go towards it. Mm. And um, it's, it's really, really, really challenging. And yes, it takes a great deal of, it's, it creates a great deal of anxiety, uh, as you could imagine. Uh, I don't know if they are the best example of what joy is, but they're the best example of what a hero is for me. Yes. Uh, because they are going towards the where everyone else is running away. And they are the heroes, absolutely are the heroes. Uh, what I do notice though with individuals is that many, many folks are finding ways to express their themselves in ways that they thought they'd only do in retirement. Um, people are taking up painting. My wife is taking up calligraphy. Uh, we are both taking a uh, grandmaster's class uh, in Taekwondo mm -hmm. every Friday, which uh, anyone who's on this call, you are invited. If you want to just uh, eat, uh, message me. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so I, and actually I will be doing a, a, a program on November 21st on managing the challenges of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, so if you would like to hear more information about that, it's going to be a full day session uh, dealing with lots of different topics related to it, including anxiety and dealing with your children, adolescents, and uh, finding peace amidst this. Um, but uh, how do you find joy, David? How do I find joy? I think joy finds me, actually. I've just realized something that's really funny because I wrote on our Facebook Live, on our Facebook post, finding your joy and up comes our friend joy from the philippines <laughs> her name it's put up her name so we're finding you joy if you uh, if you get on i know it's early for you but hey good morning we're finding you again we were with her on a call just last night that's so true. that's that's funny i find that funny Robert, that is when, funny when you say to me how do i find joy i actually find joy in everything because of two reasons number one I choose to look for it and I expect it. I expect it to actually be there. However, one only knows joy by knowing the opposite of joy. Mm. And so you have to have had, I'll, I'll talk for me. I've had the experiences of both in immense levels of sadness and of exhilaration and finding that the, the, the the balance, if that's what I'm looking for, I don't know that I want to live in balance. I don't believe in balance, to tell you the truth. If I was to really say that, I, I, if you're in balance, it's a flat line. To me, that's death. Because you have to have something that's going to have the, the area to be able to pivot on or to be, to be able to swivel on, to, to, to feel alive. If you're just in balance, you, you're stagnant. Mm. I could never see myself sitting like a, a Brahma monk you know, on the top of a mountain in total silence, waiting for enlightenment to come because it just wouldn't come to me. I don't believe because I don't sit still. I don't, I, I like to sit still. I meditate. I'm very, very at peace within myself a lot of the time. And I'm also manic at times. So it's, it's finding the, the levels to be able to be more even not necessarily even even but by allowing them to be less highs and less lows that would be a good thing i've just got my father-in-law's trying to call me i'm going to say no i'm going to go decline forgive me nuni so i just said 
forgive me. Um, Rob, the, the, the concept of joy doesn't necessarily mean you have to be in happy camp the whole time. It's not happy camp always. But having the ability to be able to look at something that is stressful or the ability to look at something, for me, I'm talking for me here, the ability to find um, the light in something or the humour in something, that's my go-to, you know, that I, I'll always go to humour. And I laugh at my own jokes. So if nobody else laughs, I'm still okay. <laughs> because I've got. I've seen that. I've seen one. that in you. I've seen that in you. <laughs> There's an audience of at least one and the 23 other voices in my head. So, you know, there's there's an ability to know that from my own experience by journeying through, you know, you can walk into the, the scariest room of your life where every single demon may be in your face. If you stop, you'll get devoured by it. This is my experience. If I keep on moving, and it doesn't matter if it's fast or if it's slow, or if it's side and to the side and then down and then up, whatever it is, if I keep in, in flow and keep on moving, eventually I'll get to the other side of that room and go through the other door. So beautiful. It's when, it's when I stop and I do stop on occasion and I allow myself to I call it go inside. I call it, it's not coming home for me, but it's, it's actually becoming internal. And that's when my brain starts to go off and start to uh, ingest bullshit. And most of it's not real. And being able to decide and go, <laughs> that's not real. That, that, that's mm. the challenge for, for, for me. But sometimes it, it, it takes me uh, about 12 seconds <laughs> and then I laugh again. So, um, joy. Joy attracts joy. Do you believe that? I do. I do. I believe uh, like thoughts attract like thoughts, like, like beliefs attract like beliefs. Yeah. Um, I believe that. Um, each of us is like a key and a key, a key. And with the key, you have certain notches and certain grooves and certain indentations, and it opens up a certain door. And each of us is like a key. And each of us has a recipe uh, for us built in uh, and you have to find it. You have to find what is it that creates your joy? What is it that, makes you happy? What is it that uh, when you do it, you find fulfillment, you find connection, you find deeper mm. relationship to yourself. I want to write these words. And when, you, and when you find that, then you need to keep going back to it. Uh, it's like when I go to a restaurant, certain restaurants, I know the exact dish I'm going to get because it's really consistent. I love the dish. I know that when I eat it, I'm going to be really, really happy. And when I go to my drums, I know that I'm going to be really happy playing my drums and experimenting with different creative beats and rhythms, uh, or when I'm developing a course or when I'm running a workshop or seminar, I know what brings me joy. Um, and then for me, it's okay. Well, I, 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 I like, I like those three items on the menu, but now I want to experiment with another one because I want to try a different taste, a different flavor. And so that requires you looking for another notch in that key. And some of it will be a yes, some of it will be a no. When it's a no, you just have to say it's a no. You don't have to judge yourself for saying, oh my God, 15 people found this a yes. Why don't I find it a yes? And then try to change yourself to make it a yes when it's a no. It just doesn't fit in the notch. And so this has to do then with self-acceptance and self-empowerment and self-realization oh, and cool. learning not to judge yourself in the process. <laughs> <laughs> because the reality is that you are a unique and beautiful being whoever you are key and you have a unique and beautiful key that makes you up and so the one of the challenges we have as human beings is to find out the key that uh creates your joy or creates your aliveness or creates your passion or creates your truth 
And some people, what happens is that they settle into a key that doesn't really open the door. It, it opens the door just a little bit, but they say, well, that's enough for me. That's okay. I'm, I'm willing to settle for this because I opened up the door a couple of notches. I've got my security. That's, that was important to me. Um, and then they, then they say to themselves, well, okay, um, that's enough. That's good enough for me. And that's okay. And that's okay. See, there is no right or wrong here. There is no judgment. I'm not judging anyone here. Um, but it is an opportunity for self-reflection um, and self-awareness and deeper exploration because you then have to ask yourself, is this enough for me? And if it is, great. And if it's not, maybe you want to try another notch. Yeah. I like that. Let me know. The, the, the but, there's that but word again, the but, the but, the but. Did I mention last week about the but? I was talking to a friend of mine and he was in a in a not good space and we have been friends for probably 30 years since of our hairdressing careers together he's another hairdresser and we were talking about positive things and how i can see things with a silver lining or or he said i love the way you look at things with so much positivity and i said you can do that too he said yeah i can but and i said to him mate the only buts you should be looking at now this is going to be wrong it's going to be you know i'm just putting a precursor out there is your beautiful bride's butt and every butt of each person that is leaving your business with gratitude that you are so grateful for them to have been able to be of service to them i said they're the only butts you should be looking at in life the rest face it front on I said, but as long as you can become of more service, because he, he's been in lockdown the same as me for a long time. Our businesses have been closed and there's, it's frustrating and it and it's, creates anger in certain people and it creates a lack of abundance mindset and it creates sadness and, and hurt and there's financial loss and there's spiritual loss and there's all these sorts of things that can manifest. And I said just choose one thing to change choose one thing to change find that one thing and it can be the smallest thing to get rid of the but i don't use the word but very often sometimes it pops out and i, go, <laughs> I want to spit it out and i change that to the word however the word however creates possibility it's like i <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Fiddler on the Roof, Robert? I'm sure you have. Of course. All right. There's a, there's a scene where, where Tevye is talking to Great Spirit, to God, and he's talking about his daughter, Saitel, who's brought her a guy that he's not really sure that he wants her to marry this guy because he's just a tailor. What's he going to be able to do for his a poor tailor? But then he goes, but on the other hand, you know, so he's always <laughs> looking at the, the differences of... of uh, possibilities you know and on the other hand and on the other hand and so i i will do that and it's my it's my dance i'll do that on occasion i just find myself if i'm stuck in something i'll do something that is actually physical it's changing my physiology to be able to create you ask what sorts of things i do to create joy i move that's my thing i move you drum you do other things as well I'll do that sort of thing and I'll just go and people, my staff know what I'm doing. They, they don't have to be verbal to them. They just go, <laughs> David. <laughs> so it's funny. And now, now my clients are going to know that as well. Cause some of them will be watching this. <laughs> One of the things that I did with my business since we went into the lockdown is to create a weekly podcast discussion i've called it inspirations emphasis here inspirations which i'm doing after this so at 3 30 today i do that it's been 3 30 in the afternoon since we started why because nobody was doing anything at 3 30 we were all stuck at home so <laughs> it was an opportunity to fill some of an afternoon for myself and i would invite an inspirational guest and the guests that they're clients of mine or of louise's that works with me in the salon and people that have had experiences, whether they be front end folk like, like the people that you're dealing with, so people from hospitals, people from education. I spoke to 
I, m one of my first guests was my cousin Jackie, who was actually a teacher. She's a high school teacher, uh, the high school certificate, so the leaving years, so the years 10, 11, and 12 she teaches, but she was also a coordinator in the school. But she's got three kids of three different ages and all in three different schools to the school that she works in as well. So there's four education systems that she had to deal with and everyone was at home. Everyone was learning at home and doing all the things. So she had to be teaching to be coordinating the students as well as coordinating the house, as well as coordinating the different mentalities and needs of each of her children. And so I thought I couldn't find, instead of talking about Jackie, hi Jackie, if you're watching, you know, finding the ability to have someone to do that and to allow it to flow and the frustrations that she learned, but to have them come on and then share that experience with other people that were also within the same similarity or the, you know, I had another one who, who was talking about resilience. She's got an education product for schools where schools send it out to their student body as well as the parent bodies. So looking for areas to be able to add value, to be able to allow them to, to grow in their mindset, in their tools, in their toolkit, you know, to have a key for them to be able to open up another area, to be able to think, oh, gee, if we just do that for this time period, we'll be able to do, do something differently and hopefully find some peace of mind, as you've mentioned a couple of times today as well. Also some joy there's plenty of joy we've been doing lots of celebrating that's what i you know the tiniest of wins people forget you know just go, ah you know that that you know that that's good you know I, I i had a sale today wow that's good so i'll go and get tomorrow's sale I'll, I'll start working on that and they don't have time for it to allow themselves to actually go Woo! that was great and it can be the smallest thing walking down the street finding a flower i sent you a photo of a flower yesterday from my garden the first roses so that, that are coming out in my garden. It's springtime and it's late this year. It's quite bizarre. But by the 2nd of November, which is my wife's and my anniversary, our garden is always full of blooms. It's full of flowers, full of roses, which is just, this is the time of roses in Melbourne because it's uh, spring and we've got the spring carnival normally, which is the race season. I don't do horses or anything like that. I don't do gambling and whatnot. However, it's a beautiful time of fashion and it's a beautiful time of, of um, partying, I suppose. So people are out and they're excited and there's a lot of jubilation that, that's out there. It hasn't been happening as much nowadays because everyone's been in lockdown. However, it can still happen because you can just celebrate oneself. You can celebrate yeah, think, like this. I think it's really important for people to know that they have tools that they can access uh, there's a wonderful tool, I think I've mentioned it, called the Five Minute Journal, mm. which is one of the tools that I use to help me find joy. And it really uh, helps you focus on, you know, as David said, uh, joy creates joy. Well, same thing for um, the way to elicit it is to focus on positive emotion. And uh, the Five Minute Journal helps you focus on your gratitude. And as, as David's saying, what you're grateful for. Uh, I was a uh, stand-up comedian for about three years of my life while I was going to graduate school. And what I would do is I would wake up in the morning and I would set the intention of asking myself the question, what's funny, what's going to be funny about today? And what I would do is by focusing on that intention, I would then find it throughout the day. Now, each of you does that already. Each of you has your intention based on your beliefs, your past, what you focus on is what you will find and see. And so uh, if you're not experiencing um, certain, a certain degree of happiness or joy, then you want to start the ignition towards uh, that direction. And the way that you would do that is through um, uh, tools that are available. So the five minute journal, basically it asks you uh, for three things you're grateful for at the beginning of your day. And then it asks you what you're going to be doing to help your day be a wonderful day, what you can do. Uh, so for example, uh, these days I'm on keto 
And so the way that I help myself have a more beautiful day is I eat, I don't need, I'm not gonna eat carbs, I'm not gonna eat bread, I'm gonna keep my carbs below 20. And, uh, and then at the end of the day, it asks you what is it that you are, that what occurred during your day that was, that was, uh, that you're grateful for. And so it really creates this wonderful loop of gratitude. And gratitude has been shown to really boost serotonin, boost do dopamine, the feel-good chemicals in your body, and reduce cortisol, reduce stress hormones. So I strongly encourage everybody who's listening to this to get the five-minute journal. I think it's a couple of bucks, but highly, highly worth it and a really, really wonderful tool. Um, so David, I think that we should, I'd like to, I think we should close at uh, 940. Uh, if you have any closing thoughts you'd like to share? I think the concept of having a gratitude journal is amazing. And there's, I do that similar sort of thing as well. But I've, I've got a couple more things that I, that I add to that. I'd love to share those. So we look for, the first thing is that we want to set a goal for the day. Now the goal might just be something like you know, smiling at people or, or to do my two kilometer run or whatever it will be. So setting a goal for the day and then looking at 10 things that I'm grateful for right now. And, to, and specifically to put down the people, if there's people in that, to write down them and what it is that you're specifically grateful for. The third thing is who am I gonna to help today? What am I going to do to add value to someone else's life? And oh, I can't remember. There's two more things. But then at the end of the day, it's also a recap on that. I don't mm. normally do the recap at the end of the day because I continually celebrate. And I think that the end of the, the, end of the day is there to acknowledge what you've done mm. and to say, you know what? It was a great day. I can go to bed now and I can be happy with that. I can be joyous with that. And to... Um, move forward with that to the next day and to go to sleep with nice thoughts in your mind Beautiful. and things that you're grateful for the person that you're grateful for that might be next to you in your bed or the meal that you've just had so there's so many things that people can be grateful for i think it's just time to take a breath and sure. enjoy that and and if you're not focusing on that it's a really easy thing to do just by stopping, planting your feet, taking your feet and walking in some grass. You know, take your shoes off and just ground yourself. I went to a healer the other day and I, I felt very, very um, uh, lightheaded after my, my session. And he said to me, do you need me to ground you? He's actually an acupuncturist. He said, do you need me to ground you? And I said, uh, yeah, I didn't think that I could drive after the session. And he went and he went to my feet and he put his thumbs, both thumbs on both of my feet in a specific spot, which brought me back like that, an instant. He said, I've just turned your kidneys on. I said, what? And he said, I've just turned your kidneys on. You'll be very grounded all of a sudden. And I said, and I was, it was instant focus. Hmm. So there's certain spots he said that's a spot that you touch the ground with first off and and i didn't even think about it until now that to become grounded is a very quick process so if i was to leave with some parting words find what it is that you're grateful for and that journey starts by asking the question what is it that i'm grateful for and if that's too big a question Break it down to three, three things like Robert's doing, three things or five things or seven things that I'm grateful for. And it's very important to write it down, physically write it down, because that's putting it from, it's putting it into a, a real thing. It's actually giving it a movement and a flow. And then it's something you can go back and read again later on for those days when you're not feeling grateful. You can go, well, on this 12th of November, 1962, Oh, I was grateful for, uh, 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 uh. and by having that case, that book, that journal of things that you're grateful for, if you're not grateful, just go and read what you were grateful for before and it will bring those memories back. Perfect. Never forget. Excellent. What about nice. you? Nice. 
Well said, David. Um, so everyone, we want to thank you for creating, we hope we've created some value for you on this uh, call. Uh, we, we definitely touched upon a number of topics. We were going to focus on joy, but then we came into the opposite of that in some ways. Um, but, you know, be, be real with yourself, be honest with yourself, be authentic. Uh, just question if you are where you are or where you want to be emotionally. And if not, uh, know that you don't have to stay powerless to that. There are choices that you can make that can help uh, increase your feeling of being more positive and happier. Uh, with that being said, I uh, want to thank you. Thank you so much, Dave, David, for this, uh, for this opportunity for us to do this. And everyone, we will see you next week. Um, and uh, are you able to do it on Sunday of next week? Uh, actually, my Sunday, your Monday, or is it uh, Saturday that's better for you? We'll be able to make that work. I'll, if I'm at the salon doing thousands of clients, you know what? I'll stop and I'll have a lunch break and I'll in, I'll join them into it, into the discussion. Well, How does that sound? <laughs> all right. Well, we'll we'll let you all know if it's going to be Saturday or Sunday. Uh, we'll we'll send or out Sunday uh, or Monday. Just or Sunday or Monday. Out of the yeah. world you're on. Yeah, because I'm in New York. You're you're in Australia. All right. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye all. Thank you. Have a beautiful week. Bye Rest bye, David. Bye bye.